Hey, I'm Penn Badgley. I'm going to be reading classic literature as Joe. Kind of Joe. Mostly Joe. Sort of. Page 189 of The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. In the voice of Joseph Goldberg. Gatsby believed in the green light. Mm, no, hang on, I gotta, gotta. <clears throat> Gatsby believed in the green light. The or, orgiastic or, or, or orgiastic? I, is that a typo? It wouldn't be a typo. Orgastic? I always thought it was orgiastic. The orgastic future. The orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. What is it? Hargy. Orgastic. Orgastic. Isn't that what I said? Gatsby believed in the green light. The orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us then. But that's no matter. Tomorrow we will run faster, stretch out our arms farther. And one fine morning. So? We beat on, boats against the current, borne back ceaselessly into the past. best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. Well, hello there. Who are you? The way I came across the voice, it was episodes one through six of season one. From what I recall, I was trying to bring a level of comedy and levity to the voiceover that I think is still in there, you know. There's a lot of twists and turns, and sometimes I listen to it and I'm like, oh, just, just say it, just shut up, just say it, just say it. But I just try to savor every single word, actually, and that's where that like odd cadence and rhythm comes from, the sort of choppiness of it. His stare, that's just stop doing anything. Just. <laughs> it's, it's weirdly hard to do. For me, it's very second nature when I'm on set. The posture, I think I could probably attribute a lot to the wardrobe. Even though it looks relaxed, it's, it's often, it's tight. It's a bit high-waisted belts and like the boots. The boots actually are the thing. But the boots, I always have back problems a good halfway through the season, which I, means I know I'm doing my job right. <laughs> Joe, I think, is always thinking of him as a real person for a moment, as an actually like deeply traumatized person who's now become a predator as a result. You know, he's always ready to pounce. I don't know that it comes through, but to me, there's, an, there's a feline quality to it. But I do miss having someone out there. Hello. No. No, I am not interested. Nope. Not interested. I was alarmed in the first season by the response. Alarmed is not the right word. On one hand, we all knew, like, if it works, that's what's going to happen. But now I just, I have to laugh at the response to Joe, the thirst to Joe. I'm always thinking of like, ooh, that is, ooh, it's concerning. It's disconcerting. I do think of the like social implications of any thing that I'm a part of. I wonder about them. You can't measure that though. What you shouldn't do is read tweets, but you can read tweets. And so I've largely stopped giving the response too much stock and just appreciating it for what it is. Heartbreak is always a catalyst for a new path. I always approach Joe the same way. It might change because of where he is and what's happening, but I honestly always approach him like he believes that he's trying to save somebody. He believes that he's trying to be better. So it doesn't matter where he is or what he's doing. It's always the same. You know, and then where it's crazy, it's just made all the more crazy by the inconsistency. So, so that's, that's, that's how I always approach it. Greg Berlanti, our show creator, pitched me on the ending that he had pitched at least Sarah Gamble, the co-creator. I can't say what it is, but it is the one ending that I think is like, wow, that's really smart. And that's really the only way it could and should end. 
With Joe, you think about it, like what ending makes you feel good? Is it him dead? It's almost like it's, it's too expected. Also, whoever has to kill him is then turned into a murderer. You know, do we want retribution? Do we want revenge? What is justice? It brings up a lot of questions, um, but it could be in the menu. I'm not judging that one. I'm just saying that what Greg pitched me for the, for the, for the whole series finale, I think is brilliant and we'll see if we get there. I think on TikTok you have to, <laughs> I think, you have to sort of play by the rules within the parameters. It's a place that's meant for some things and not other things. Everything I'm doing there is mostly very playful and, and just slightly strategic. <laughs> Truthfully, I love to dance. I do. Do I love to dance on TikTok? I might be giving that impression <laughs> and for the time being, it's working. Um, I'll probably lay off it for a while. It's just fun, you know? And if you do it in the right way, it works and people want to see it. So we'll see how long it lasts. But even with nothing on, but I made you look, I made you look. This is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Chapter one, page one. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. However little known the feelings or views of such a man may be on his first entering a neighborhood, this truth is so well fixed in the minds of the surrounding families that he is considered as the rightful property of someone or other of their daughters. That's fine, right? <laughs>